Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation on ancient India's most remarkable literary and mathematical text. Siri Bhulai is a Jain manuscript composed entirely in numbers. Absolutely no words have been used. What's more is that it is said to contain 718 languages. Seems ridiculous, right? So many languages through some uh, mysterious numerical script? How this seemingly magical system works will become clearer in just a bit. Let me provide you with some background info before that, that will allow us to better appreciate this text. This unique work is credited to Kumudendu Muni, a Digamba monk from southern Karnataka. He is believed to have composed it around 1000 years ago, though estimates range from as early as the 8th century to as late as the 15th century, according to more recent research. At its core, this epic is based on several Jain works, primarily the sacred Digamba text known as Shatkhandagam. Amazingly, it also incorporates verses from the Mahabharat, Ramayana, Rigved, and countless other sources, including non-Indian ones. This makes it not only multilingual, as I mentioned, but also multicultural. Truly, a treasure trove for Jains, Indians, and scholars worldwide. In fact, its total content amounts to over six times the size of the Mahabharat. This text covers an incredible range of disciplines, from arithmetic and philosophy to um, metallurgy and chemistry. Now, finally, onto its structure. At a first glance, the structure of Siri Bhule will seem quite, quite straightforward, but its true complexity lies just beneath its surface. This is the basic component of Siri Bhule, a 27 by 27 numerical grid called Chakra. This is all Siri Bhule is, just thousands and thousands of these grids or chakras scattered throughout. As you can see, each cell in this grid contains a number between 1 and 64 which are meant to represent syllables across the aforementioned 780 languages. Now let's see how we'll uncover them. I mean, how do we even make sense of this two-dimensional numerical grid? How do we transform it into a sequence of characters that we can actually read? This process begins with bandhas. A band is essentially a specific pattern for traversing this grid. In other words, it tells us the order in which the numbers in a chakra are to be read. Let me explain with the help of a couple examples. Take a look at this pattern right here. Here, the pattern involves starting from the top and moving diagonally whilst wrapping around its edges. Then we have this one. Here, we start from a corner and move spirally inwards towards its center. This last one, called Chitraband, is the most fascinating of the three. Here, a pattern comes from certain pictograms laid on top of our grid. For example, here is the outline of a shikha, or a temple dome. After applying one of these predefined patterns on our grid, we receive a sequence of numbers. So now, we've gone from a two-dimensional grid to a linear sequence of numbers. Now finally, we simply, simply substitute these numbers with phonetic alphabets, according to a one-to-one -one substitution table. Take a look at this one in Devnagari. According to this table, the number 1 corresponds to a, 2 to a, 3 to a, 4 to e, and so forth. Take this as our sequence of numbers from our previous slide. 52 has been replaced with ma, 7 with u, and so forth, giving us the following sequence of characters. When punctuated, the result is the following text, Kubudendu Muni, the creator of Siri Bhule. Since the characters are phonetic, we can represent them in any script according to our convenience. For example, take a look at the tables in Kannada or Brahmi. Remember, across each table, the same number represents the same sound. So this is how we have uncovered the shloka, or just a single sentence in this case, from this chakra. The real mind-blowing part is that a single chakra, when traversed in different patterns, can yield different shlokas, even in different languages. 
Take a look at a couple of these shlokas decoded in these multiple languages. We have Prakrit, Sanskrit, Tamil, and Telugu shlokas right here. Now pay close attention to the Arthmagadhi shlok. Jains might immediate, immediately recognize it as the holy Navkar Mantra. The significance of Siri Bhuvala is difficult to overstate. For example, from a cryptograph, crypto, cryptographic perspective, this text provides a decryption and encryption technique that really showcases the ingenuity of ancient India. Apart from that, matrix calculations, which are a foundational concept of math, find direct application here. In linguistics, its importance is the most apparent. Here is a single text containing 718 languages, including ancient ones, as well as ancient forms of our modern languages. Scholars of ancient Indian literature will especially appreciate the numerous ancient poetic forms and devices that have been preserved here. Remember, all in a single text. Now, as you can see, consequently, fully understanding this text requires expertise across multiple fields. Unfortunately, despite its magnificence, Siri Bhulai has been largely overlooked by contemporary Indian scholarship, with little ongoing research. Through our Siri Bhulai project, we hope to bring awareness to this text and help the public better appreciate its enigmatic brilliance. At the same time, we are developing a comprehensive decoding system that would integrate modern na natural language processing techniques with traditional methods that have been used historically to decode it. Being open source, we especially appreciate all eager contributors to our decoding software. All details are in the description should you be interested. Thank you all for watching this introductory video. More videos with detailed examples are coming very soon, so stay tuned. And please leave any questions or suggestions you might have down in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.